Hello everybody, it's Christine Aldridge at C.L. Aldridge Art. For those of you who know me, uh, that's terrific. If you don't, uh, this is who I am. And I do uh, a uh, coloring adventures. Uh, I am an artist. I do dark coloring books for a living. Uh, and of course, since I see my art in black and white and I draw it in black and white and hopefully I make it pretty for you in black and white. Uh, anytime I sit down to color, <laughs> it's always an adventure, <laughs> mostly because I am learning uh, right along with all of you uh, to learn to color better uh, every single day. And um, this is something that I colored on our, uh, I do a live stream every week on Sundays, and this is what we worked on on Sunday. Um, after the reason I'm showing it to you now is because after this show on Sunday, uh, I did tweak it just a little bit. Uh, I added uh, flames to the uh, Firebird. Uh, I had just sort of left it um, uh, yellow, uh, I, I think, during the... Um, uh, during the show. And so I went back in afterward and added the red and the orange uh, to the flames on the outside so that it would make it more look like or make it look more like he was on fire. Um, and I think that is the only uh, major change that I made to it. I did uh, use the um, copper glitter gel pen in the yellow sun. I darkened up some of the golds. Um, but otherwise, uh, it is just exactly as we left it on Sunday, and I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. And so I can now, this was Guest Artist Sunday, and so this book uh, is Goddess or Nature Goddess, Goddess Nature, yeah, Goddess Nature, and it is by Christina McAllister, and it is book one of a series, and it is just chock full of beautiful uh, symmetrical art that just speaks to me. And uh, I have been a big fan of Christina's artwork for a long time. I love this drawing. What I love even more is she gives you, uh, now it's not a true of all of the drawings, but it is true of a few, recognizing that this would be A, popular, and B, hard for a lot of us to color. Uh, she did go ahead and put two copies in the book. And then, because it is so greatly detailed, she also put two closer up copies in the book. And there are, in all of the ones that are really kind of detailed and hard to, um, you know, that might might take a bit of practice to color, uh, she did that. And I love this image. And, of course, this one. This one has uh, two copies and then two more closer up as well. Just beautiful, beautiful art. This one also has two copies. And then, uh, no, there's not a closer up on this one. But Christina's art is so lovely. I love this one. This one is so interesting. Really, really an interesting idea. Uh, you know, with the stars and the galaxy sky back here and the raindrops and the stars and the people on her hand. Lots of grayscale testing sheets that you can use. And, of course, this is... Um, 
Christina's website. Uh, gypsymystery.com and that is where you can go and also buy all of her books uh, on PDF or as PDFs so really beautiful stuff today we are going to be coloring in my second book um, now the first book of course was uh, and I'm just pulling up the back of uh, this is 40 fan favorites uh, which is a sampler of all eight of my books. So if you are new to my art and want a place to start um, and want to find out which books you might like, if you buy 40 Fan Favorites, Volume 1, you'll get five drawings out of each of the first eight books. So they are Flowers and Dreams, uh, Flower Inspirations, Flowers and Flyers, Flowers and Whimsy, Flowers of Fantasy, Flowers of Wonder, Fantasy Flower Garden, Fabulous Flowers, and uh, Do You Think That I Might Enjoy uh, Flowers? I also, uh, and here it is, have a Mandela's Only book, and it is called Imagine that. Uh, the best of C.L. Aldridge art, or the best of C.L. Aldridge mandalas. And, of course, this is my author copy, so that's why it's not for resale. But this is a project that I'm working on right now uh, with the Black Widow pencils. So I'm doing this. Um, I did a, a part of it on stream to show you how I'm doing it, but um, otherwise I've been just been coloring it on my own time. And speaking of time, holy heck, I have had a day of adulting. Heck, I don't want to have to adult. I want to color something. So wanting to make a video was the perfect opportunity. So what I have here, uh, those of you who watch my uh, show regularly uh, know that I am very fond of of the uh, Derwent ink tents. Um, and by the way, if you are too and would like to subscribe uh, to my channel, please do. Please like and subscribe to my videos uh, and uh, ring the bell. That way you won't miss any videos that I do put up. I am also on all social medias, um, or at least most of them. Uh, I am on Facebook, I am on Instagram, and, I am, and I'm on Twitter. Uh, I don't tweet very much, uh, but I do post a lot of uh, stuff there. Um, now, I am lucky enough to be blessed with the entire set of Intense pencils, but I also have a, a, a pan travel set, and in the travel set are seven colors that are actually not in the full set, so they are in addition to the colors that are in the full set. Uh, but they are also colors that can be used to mix many, many other colors. And I always say that uh, when you're working with a new medium, if you, uh, and you don't know if you're gonna like it yet, always choose uh, the small set. Try it out, see if you like it, if it's something that you love, then you can buy the bigger set. You can either then pass your 12 set along uh, to someone else, or you can save it as backups. Um, in this particular case, this could easily be a 12 set pencil, uh, you know, a 12, 12 set of pencils, but it is in uh, pan form. And uh, it is the basic colors, of course, that you would use to create pretty much every other color in the rainbow. And that's why I always say if you start with a 12 set, you can pretty much blend or mix every other color. All the, you know, the, the larger set gets you is the convenience of those pre-mixed colors. But you can build your own, uh, you know, if you know what colors make what. And even if you don't, you can play and experiment. 
Now, um, Flower Inspirations is uh, a book that's got, it's got three sets of sets. <laughs> so, uh, in addition to a lot of individual drawings, uh, it's also got sets. And what I mean by that is, like, this is a four drawing set of botanical blooms and mandalas. This is one that I colored. These are the other two in that set. And then it's also got, this is the one we're going to color today, but, um, and this is one that I did color. Uh, these are my parrot bees. <laughs> I, call them par I call them parrot bees because they're bees, supposed to be big bumblebees, but they have wings like parrots. <laughs> Oops. See, I told you it was a coloring adventure, right? <laughs> and this is a, a little set that I did uh, for a friend of mine who is, uh, who, whose husband is a minister or a pastor. Uh, so I did her a faith, a hope, a charity, and a love. And then I also, this was an eventful year. Uh, this, this actually goes like this. Uh, I colored this as if it was marquetry, uh, you know, with the wood grains, and I used um, acrylic, uh, black acrylic uh, metallic paint. And uh, this is another standalone drawing. And then this is another set, uh, or the third set, and this is, uh, I made this for a friend of mine who was going through cancer treatment. So, gratitude. Compassion, grace, and healing. So, and this is, these are all beautiful colored. As in all of my sets, uh, or all of my books, there is a complete set of all the drawings in travel size or um, card size. You know, you can color them and glue them to the front of cards. You could cut it off, cut it off, and cut it in half, staple it together, and it becomes a travel size book. Um, all kinds of that kind of stuff, and so it, it goes on. And then I always include color test pages in the back of my books. So let me get this all set up get a, a plastic pad behind here and we'll get started. I'll be right back. And hello and welcome back. Okay, um, now this uh, color palette that I'm going to uh, uh, work on today is um, this is the swatch book where these particular um, colors are swatched. And um, the now this is, is what's in the 12 set. We've got a yellow, a mango, a poppy red, a dark plum, an ultramarine, a bright blue, a racing green, which is super dark, a teal green, which is a blue green, kiwi, which is my yellow green, uh, burnt yellow ochre, natural brown, and ink black. And so from that, I want to build all of the colors that I'm going to use. Now, I have been threatening to make a tropical color palette for a while, and so I think that I may do that. Um, so I am going to start out using this particular green uh, in a lighter uh the lighter side of it, uh, which is this one, and um, it, on my center flower. And so I am just simply going to uh, spray down my ink tins with a little spray bottle just to get the tops of everything just a little bit wet. 
Um, now, these will act sort of similar to watercolors, except that they are actually ink. Instead of a watercolor pigment, these are an actual ink pigment. So, I'm going to mix some water in there from my brush. Just sort of squeeze it out. And you can see that the base color on this green is very, very yellow. So I want it to be that yellow, more of a yellowy green. And we'll see if I've gone too far or not. And I really just want to start off with a light layer of this color. Now, this is the Create Space paper, and um, you do have the trick to working on uh, the, it's actually Amazon paper, uh, although this book was printed back when it was Create Space. So this paper is slightly thinner than um, what comes in the books now. But I've never let it stop me, and I've never uh, had it peel or pill or do anything like that. The trick is to always uh, just be light with, like I'm not squeezing my pen at all. I'm just picking up the water that comes off with the paint over here. And as it dries... Uh, the color will lighten up as the paper dries. So I'm just straight coloring a layer right now. To me, ink tints are very much like magic. Um, and notice I'm not being, you know, I'm not being super fussy about the, I just am getting a flat layer of color down to begin the process with. I am approaching it more petal by petal than just washing over the whole thing, but you could wash over the whole thing if you wanted to. And I have plans for the center that are a different color, so that's why I haven't done the center flower. So I mentioned earlier that I had been adulting all day. I actually started this video yesterday and uh, of course um, so what I'd been doing all day is sorting out doing what we all do, right? Toward the end of the month we sort out uh, uh, what our bills are, what we have, uh, and uh, what can get paid, and what can get partially paid, and uh, what has to wait. So that's what I was doing. One of the things that has come up, and it always it always works out to come up at an uh, in inconvenient time, is I have to choose to renew the virus scan on my um, computer and. Of course, after you've been with the same company uh, after the first year, uh, you end up ha you don't have the offer, you know, the, the the discounted offer anymore. So I usually switch between uh, three different companies every three years. So you know, you can go with McAfee, and then you've got Bit Defender, and you've got uh, you know, there's there's You've got uh, Norton makes a, a good antivirus software, um, all of that. And so I have to I choose which one. And after two years of not being with a company, they'll drop you off their list so you can then qualify for the uh, uh, first year rate again. So 
It's basically a game. So I've been, I was shopping to find out because, um, you know, now it all comes with ransomware protection and identity theft protection. And so I've been shopping around trying to find out what the best deal was. Always fun. I got to go do a little retail therapy today. And when I go retail therapy, it's always $5. It's at the dollar store. And so look at what I got. I got these cute little stickers. I've got little happy face stickers and little heart stickers and uh, these are those um, glittery gem things. Whoops. Sorry about the flash, guys. Uh, glittery, they're like gem sheets. And you can, I was going to use them to embellish flowers. <laughs> and the stickers are for the thank you cards. Uh, I made the envelopes for the thank you cards uh, last night. So those are all going to go out. Um... Now, I even went to the post office today to mail some books to a lady who bought some. And, uh, okay, so now I also know I'm going to want those out there to be this same green, those little bud-looking things. So I'm going to mix up even a little bit more of my color. So I can get those. This is a uh, this little brush is marvelous. This is the little brush that came with this uh, set, and it's uh, working really well. I have to say, I'm in, I'm always impressed by anything that Derwent makes. Um, and of course, I love Inktense. And I believe that it was our Miss Kenny who sent me um, this lovely travel set. Um, was very kind of her. And I realized the other day that I hadn't really used it. So I thought I really needed to get it out and show that I do, in fact, appreciate it very, very much. Um, I love that it's got the seven colors that are not in the um, other set. This kiwi, which is what color this is, happens to be one of those seven colors as well. And as you can see, um, you know, the, the, the water works uh, hang on, I just need to roll the book a little bit here um, so that I don't end up uh, putting my hand down uh, and having my palm rub on the paper while it's wet. I guess I could hit the zoom a couple times. It's looking like I'm about due to replace my uh, background uh, poster board here. That is poster board and I've got three of them, three more spare ones of this color. I found that this color blue works really well with the camera. Um, and it seems to hold the focus well. So Hopefully, it is the same as true on your end. Now, you see, it does start to sort of buckle the paper. So, in order to counter that, you can put a second set of clips on. Um, I already have two holding my cover over. So, I can add two more which should prevent that page 
from curling. And once it's dry, once you close the book on it anyway, uh, once it's dry, it'll flatten right out. So you don't have to worry about that. If paper um, getting a little crinkly on the back uh, bothers you, then um, don't use water in your books. But if, like me, you kind of enjoy it <laughs> because you like to use water, you know, water products in your books, um, then uh, just go for it. This first part is always not very exciting as we get uh, as we get started, but it gets much better as we go on. And so is everybody busy getting kids ready to go back to school? Grandkids? Seems hard to believe that in some areas kids will be going back to school as early as, you know, in a couple of weeks. Obviously not all areas, but in some. Uh, now the other thing that I need to do is pull, you know, because really what I'm doing is color mapping, um, looking for color balance. So uh, if I know, now these are going to be green and blue, uh, or more to the point, green and sort of a teal teal color, uh, keeping with the tropical theme. Um, and so I also need to decide all the other elements that are going to be green. For this particular moment, um, I know only that I'm going to eventually do these in sort of a uh, kind of a peachy orange color. So I am actually going to start out by putting a layer of yellow down. Actual true yellow. Um, under, underneath to be able to allow me to blend eventually my, uh, my, my, my peachy orange. So even in ink tents, uh, you do want to uh, start out by building layers. So let me grab a clean paper towel and dab off your brush now, in this particular case, um, because I have this is a, a small brush, I do have a little pot of water, and so I'm going to clean my brush off with that. And just use this to dab it. And then when you um, squeeze, you can tell how well you got it clean by whether or not any color remains. And it looks like none does. So now I am going to put a little bit of water on the yellow. And on this, I want it to be a dark yellow because I'm going to be blending a red, uh, a red a kind of an orange on top of it. So I am going to use it straight off the top of the block. Actually, I may not do that because this is awfully thick this way. So let's try this by actually blending it down just a little bit. 
<laughs> a bubble. Pop, bubble. Pop. That bubble does not want to pop. Okay, we'll let the bubble be. Now you can see the difference in how much water it goes down. On this, there was hardly any water that was going down. And I can actually still pick up parts of that pigment. which you're not really supposed to be able to do because once it's dry, ink tints are supposed to be permanent. That bubble is being really stubborn. Oh, there it popped. Okay. And again, I'm going to leave the centers of the flowers uh, without color because I'm going to make them a contrasting color. I hope everybody is having a good week, and thank you to all of you who came to Sunday's stream. It was such fun to work on that Christina McAllister picture, and um, and uh, I and to, and I actually ran long, uh, which is something I rarely do. Three hours and three hours and twenty something minutes. Um, and had an absolute ball doing it. So thank you all for joining me and joining in the fun we were having <laughs> to see whether or not I was going to go three for three or finally be able to successfully color something um, from one of my favorite artists. And, uh, and I'm glad I finally was able to pull one off. May it only be one of many, many, now that I, I uh, have broken the, broken the intimidation barrier on uh, Christina McAllister's grayscale. Grayscale is actually, it's not difficult to color. It's just, you know, I, I just kept picking the wrong colors to do it in, uh, in all the other ones that I've tried, or maybe not even the wrong colors, but certainly um, the wrong mediums for what I wanted to do. I really enjoyed doing it in the watercolors. I promise, guys, this will get more interesting as we go. Right now it's looking pretty yellow all the way around, isn't it? <laughs> It will get better. Oh, I saw the finished portrait that uh, that um, Dee Dee did of uh, of Faith Faithfulness. Um, wow, it was just fabulous, and uh, uh, it just made me smile. That big, beautiful, gorgeous smile that Faithful wears is just amazing. It is just amazing. That is pure joy to have a smile like that and get to share it. No wonder it inspired Dee Dee. <laughs> I think of Faithful every time I, uh, every time I look at my washi tape. <laughs> I think, oh, 
I know somebody who loves washi tape. Okay, and maybe just a little more, considering I'm only halfway around here. No idea where those <coughs> bubbles are coming from. But okay. Okay, hello and welcome back. I changed a couple of settings and we'll see if that helps with that overloading. So far so good. Hopefully it has not changed the quality of the video or the sound. Um, I am learning uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks about um, uh, the differences between uh, file containers containers hold that what a container is is it's the uh, the technical side of what holds all the pieces of a video so it holds the frames and holds the sound uh, part and um, there are differences of course there the videos that we post to YouTube are called uh, mp4 they're, they're in mp4 containers there is also an mkv container which is what I just switched it to which means that before I uh, throw this in the editor, I've got to uh, do something called a remix, remux, not remix, remux to uh, MP4. But it's a lot easier on my CPU to record in the MKV because the OBS <laughs> that I use is um, open source Linux based and the MKV container is open source Linux based and so they are much more uh, compatible and far less CPU usage. Ooh, man, took me a while to learn that. In other words, I was trying to find out why every time I recorded a video my computer was shutting down. And uh, so I've been running a series of tests on different videos and um, Okay, so that will be a good, that, that's a good start. We will use that to, uh, to, to be our starting point. And we will go ahead and cut that. Okay, and rinse that brush off. Okay, now uh, um, I'm ready to start on those, and I am going to go ahead and uh, use some of this teal blue, and I'm going to just go ahead and mix it right in with that green yellow.
and I think I will probably even add, just going to put a couple of drops in there, help to rinse out that brush, and I'm going to add a little bit of the bright blue because <clears throat> remembering that this exercise is all about um, I believe this is the bright blue out here on the end this exercise is all about making the colors that we need with just the 12 colors that we have So I want to change that. See, now that is a much prettier blue, at least to me. It seems like a much prettier blue-green, and it is, in fact, a color that I want. So I'm going to go ahead, and even though I have it all in my brush. I'm going to uh, wipe it off there so that A, I can see what color it is, and B, I don't have quite so much on my brush. And once again, these are just first layers, so it's okay if they are a little imperfect, because we can always go back in and do correcting layer. This is the nature of watercolor, so don't, you know, don't panic. And of course, if the, I if I do this and I fail at it, well, then um, we will have learned something new, right? We will have learned what not to do. But I got the idea for this. Uh, from the hand, you know, when I did the Hannah Curls on one, where I did the dark blues on the outside of the uh, leaves and the purples on the inside. So as you can see, I'm, I'm finding that this is slightly better for feathering those inside edges, doing it like this. Once again, don't, you know, don't, you know, if this isn't finished, this is, this is starting. So it's got to look ugly before it looks good. Is what they often say. I saw, what did I see on, oh, I saw something the other day that just, um, I don't know what it was, touched my heart, I, I remember that, it was just somebody being kind, obviously, but, um, or a, a, oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. Did you guys see the story about the farmer? Um, he's been sick, and um, uh, he's been apparently fighting uh, um, melanoma. And his he's a wheat farmer, and his um, fields were right. I mean, they, they needed to be harvested, and there was no way he could do it himself, and 
his neighbors, his neighbors, and people from all over uh, the area all brought their harvesters, and they did, uh, the guy said, they did three weeks work in six hours. See, it still makes me cry. <laughs> and that, uh, you know, and they organized it. They had organized it, apparently, uh, had, had, you know, had already had it taken care of, basically, uh, before, before this guy even realized that he wasn't going to be able to do the work himself. You know, because obviously he had hoped that he was going to be able to do the work himself, but these guys had arranged it so that if he, that, you know, if it didn't look like he could, uh, and they, obviously, they probably checked with his wife, uh, and so without telling him, they showed up one morning and, uh, Got her done. Three weeks of harvesting done in six hours. I'm thinking to myself, oh, you know, they should do that. They should go as a team from farm to farm and just do all the harvesting. Because if you could wipe out a entire three weeks work in uh, six hours that one guy could do that everybody would save if you went around and did everybody's you know all of them if they all had help Farmers are just up against it, you know. They work so hard, and most of them are doing, you know, the same thing on their small, smaller farms. But if they all got together, that's the way that, uh, That's certainly the way that I've seen it done. You know, whenever you see one of those documentaries about the um, the Amish country, and everybody shows up to do the barn raising or the you know building the house or all of those types of things. Just goes to show that we are better with each other than we are alone. I am really just rambling, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, and uh, I switched off there for a second, and I had a look at what the new settings were doing. And I am now getting an encoder overload again, although maybe we'll see if... Uh, yeah, that didn't seem to have affected the quality at all when I changed the settings. Um, to the MKV, but I've got it automatically giving me an MB or an MP4 as well, so <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> I'm sure you guys don't want to know any of that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, I did clean off my brush, and now I am ready to uh, see what we can do about creating a nice uh, vermilion color for uh, out on the edges of these. So I'm going to take a little of my mango orange over here and I'm going to just go ahead and go right into this yellow. Might as well. And I'm going to grab up a little of this red as well. 
along with my mango. I need considerably more mango. Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, that's getting there. I'm going for a vermilion color, which is more of a reddish uh, yellow or a, a reddish orange. And I'm going to add a little of the yellow in as well to see if I can't bring that go for just a tad more of the orange color. Get that red out from the corners there. So really what I'm doing is I'm going for a color that is more of a pinky orange than a red orange. or a pinky orange than a yellow orange. So let's see how I did. Um, I'm gonna start down here and we're gonna turn the book, doing pretty much the same thing as I did on the others. Just sort of going around the edges I'm going to leave a center that is yellow. Actually, you know what? I may go all the way with the orange in here. I have an idea of something else that I want to do with these. Plus, I like orange. I'm eventually going to color all those little tiny leaves in with a black pen. So it doesn't matter if I go over them right now. But with that yellow back there uh, as the first layer, see how it tends to bring out the pink in the um, in the orange color, and that's what I want. I'm going for that sort of vermilion-y color. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. In that case, then, we'll go from there. Okay, so that is looking good. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back. It is now another day. It has taken me many days to make this particular video. Um... Part of it is uh, as I'm learning about what my new system and settings and all of that will do. Uh, and the other is, uh, um, it is, of course, it was month end and today is the first day of August. And so I've been uh, doing the books and all of those types of things. So this is as uh, basically as far as we've gotten with this so far. I've got a first layer, and I, I do emphasize that these are all first layers. We are going to be layering on top of each other uh, to achieve the vision that I have in mind for this with the ink tens. But um, the, uh, the video 
is working on being an hour long already and um, so I like to keep them to one hour um, to start with and I'm going to be doing this in um, sequential pieces so as soon as I post this one or even as soon as I um, finish this one and get it rendered I'll be starting the next one but I did say that I was going to um, color these uh, little areas in black uh, and so I wanted to do that just to give you a, an idea of what the emphasis uh, that I'm talking about on these is. So um, I think it's very striking to have uh, a little black spot in these flowers. You know, that often happens in yellow flowers. Uh, you'll end up with a little black spot. Sometimes it's got um, red around it. But this just gives you an idea because, you know, black is a color too. And I could do this with the ink tents and a brush, but I have these nifty uh, micron pens, so I might as well use them. These are my drawing pens. This particular one is a 1.0, uh, which makes it closer to a fine tip as opposed to the uh, zero fives that I draw with. All of the lines that I do see here are a zero five width. And that just has to do with the pen nib. So I will go around and do all of these in black and be right back to show you how that looks. Voila! <laughs> there it is. Um, okay, so thus ends part one. Uh, once again, we are going to continue on with this. Uh, um, and using only the uh, pan set, the travel pan set of the Derwent Ink Tens. Now, this, these are nowhere near the final colors. Uh, these are only the base coats. Uh, please remember that. Uh, and I will see you when we return, or when I return to continue this adventure. And until then, please color something pretty. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Bye.